grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. morning. Welcome to Bee Ridge Presbyterian Church and we welcome all of you who are here in person and all those online uh, on this Sunday. A gorgeous day. A uh, few announcements. Uh, today right after worship I hope you will meet me and, uh, and everybody else down at Keys Hall which you go out that door and down that way. Uh, about a little over a month ago I went to Guatemala and I'm going to do a little presentation there and on that trip, but not necessarily about the trip, but how we're woven together and, um, yeah, and other things. There's Guatemalan coffee that I brought back, and Terry and I made over 100 cookies, and because Terry's there, then that means they'll be good. And, <laughs> um, and we may have some other Guatemalans joining us with authentic food, and so we're looking forward to that. And... Hopefully you'll be there. Jeanette, why don't you come on up? Good morning. So I wanted to make an announcement today um, from your um, business and personnel committee and your session that they have approved. As you know, one of the many things we're working on is facility use of our campus to generate income to our budget and we are in negotiations with a lovely church um, by the name of Bethlehem Ministries and they are a part of the Assemblies of God denomination. Uh, so we're working through negotiations but the committee and session has approved for us to be able to keep moving forward. Um, what that means is that our sanctuary and some of our other open areas will be used and we will be collecting rents on that. Um, you will have an opportunity today to meet some of these lovely, lovely people um, at the presentation. So if you weren't already intrigued with Terry Joe's presentation, just know you have another reason to want to come and welcome this, this beautiful uh, church that we've been able to meet up with. Uh, and that's through our uh, realtor broker who has been helping um, interview and get people ready. So continue to um, shine your beautiful present, your warm and spirit and personality uh, like you do to everybody that enters these uh, doors um, to the um, Bethlehem Ministries. You won't be um, disappointed. Thank you.
few others. There's pizza and bingo this Friday, I about said Sunday. And if you'd like to come to that, just give Joyce Kelly a hey, I would like to come so we have enough pizza. Um, and Saturday is work day. And I know this week there are a couple birthdays. Betty Ann, where are you, Betty Ann? Happy birthday. And Donald, where are you, Donald? Foster up? Maybe he's outside. No, there you are. Happy birthday. Um, thankful for Don Marie being our liturgist and our choir and Terry and Aiden for being our acolyte and for tech and everyone who helps, uh, helps us all worship. One more key announcement. Every Sunday I look for one, people help me find one typo. This week I found it before anybody else. Actually, no, Don Marie found it. Um, the Alleluia, after the offering, it says, Alleluia, Alleluia, da, 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 da. It says 592, it is 106. You will be singing a different song if you're, pl if you're singing 592. So, and that might be fun, but um, it's 106, 106. All right, there's some more announcements in your bulletin, but let us stand and greet one another in the name of Christ. Please join me in our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins. When fear and doubt stroll through our doors, God stands beside us, whispering of peace. When we toss and turn late at night, God sits beside our beds, singing lullabies of love. When we stumble through the shadows of sin, God illuminates the paths of goodness and joy. When we journey the pathways of life, God joins us as a companion along the way. Come, let us worship our God. Let us pray. Ever-present God, companion on the way, you walk behind, beside, and beyond us. You catch us unaware. You have upheld us with your love even when we have not aware of your presence. Break through the disillusionment and despair clouding our vision that with wide-eyed wonder we may find our way and journey on as messengers of your good news. Amen. Let us stand, if able, and sing hymn number 482, Praise Ye the Lord, the Almighty.
may be seated. Trusting in God's love and presence, who always walks with us, even when we walk away, and even when we don't recognize him, let us confess our sins together, followed by our personal silent prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, who always walks with us, there are times we slip back to wanting proof that you are indeed with us. We want to see for ourselves. We want to make up our own minds. We want to know the truth by having the facts in front of us. Call us away from tangible proof and into faith that knows beyond understanding. Teach us to trust our experiences of your love around us, your presence within us, your spirit guiding us. Friends, the same Jesus who broke bread with the disciples so that we might see and believe breaks bread with us too. Trust in the love and presence Jesus embodies. See and believe that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. be seated. Our first scripture reading is from Isaiah 25 verses 6 through 9. Listen now to the word of God. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God of rain and of sunshine, of sand and mud, you made everything with a purpose, including us. Help us to remember your intention for us was to be fruitful upon this earth, to care for all of creation the way you care for us. May our actions bear fruit, our wor words build each other up, our lives bring hope to others. May we remember your intention for us in all we say and do. Guide us into ways of living that are more sustainable and restorative instead of just for our convenience and speed. Help us not to be re reckless with your gift of life, but to honor and treasure all of it you made for us. Lead us, O oh God, into ways of your love, not only for our human neighbors, but also for all of creation to love this good earth you made for us and to care for it, to care for it. Keep us to your created intention for us in the very beginning and give us the courage to live into your vision. We pray for people all over the world and today, oh, today we lift up the Middle East. We lift up places near Ukraine and Russia and we pray for peace everywhere around the world. May your peace break through in ways that we just don't know how or 
how to approach it or to find ways, and we know that your peace will help us find answers. We pray for our country that you would work in the lives of our hearts and minds of our leaders to use our resources in ways that make peace possible. We pray for our church, for the people here and their families and folks at home and folks yet to come that we too would find peace, whether our turmoil be health-related or financial or otherwise. Help us to continue to grow deeper and deeper in our faithfulness and reach out in the ways you call us to do so. We pray for Betty Ann and Don and for the life that they share with us and the joy that they bring. Be with them this week as we celebrate with them their life and presence with us. Creator and God of peace, God who embodies peace, we give thanks. Make us channels of your peace. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. invite the children and youth to come up for a couple moments. All of you. I know there are three here. Is it mystery? Yeah, come on. I know. Cove, right? And what's your name again? Aiden? 
That's right. I know. Thank you. Is it mystery? No. Yeah. Terry Joe. All right. So, do any of you, have you all started learning a different language? No? What language are you starting to learn? Ooh, Spanish and Portuguese. All right, you're going to be our Spanish. You're going to be our German. Frieden? Yes. How about you be Hawaiian? Hello. Okay, so there's a word, peace, peace. Everybody do that. Everybody do peace. Yeah, peace. What in the world does that mean? I don't know. We're about to find out. In um, English, peace is peace, right? P-E-A-C-E. -E. In Spanish, I believe it's, do you know what it is? Paz? Anybody know Spanish? Peace? Paz? All right, so you remember paz. Say that one real quick. All of us together. Paz. There we go. Did I say you're German? All right. German, and I'm looking to the back, is Frieden. All right, everybody together? Frieden. With your best German accent. Frieden. I'm sure that was a German accent. <laughs> Good job. All right, this one's kind of easy. It's not really a foreign language, but peace in Hawaiian is aloha. Ready? Aloha. And if you feel like it, never mind. I was going to do a best hula dance, but I don't want to embarrass myself. All right, in um, Hebrew, it's shalom. Let's all say that, shalom. In Arabic, I believe it's salam. Is it? All right, good. Thank you. Help me get some confidence here. And in French, anybody know French? Pas? P-A-I-S. C. Oh, C. Never mind. We're going to say it's pas. Good enough. And everyone who knows French, hopefully they can tell us later. You know a little bit of French? All right. You want to be, well, now you know pas. Kind of like our Spanish one, or German, Spanish, German, Hawaiian, and we're going to make you French too. And we're all going to be the rest. So peace, there's so many languages. Peace, and may, what in the world does peace mean? For me, it means comfort or, or uh, just a state of relaxing a little bit. And this week, I was um, with a friend of mine, and I was uptight about something, really uptight. And he said, you know what, Terry Joe? relax and that has become another word for peace do any of you get uptight any of you all get uptight about something yeah 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 or anxious when a test comes up oh my gosh do you get uptight for a test a little bit it depends on the test right or some of us adults whenever we're getting tight financially get a little bit nervous or something big in our life and and you know what a new word for me for peace is relax, relax. And you know what he also said? He said when you relax, you can think, th think things through clear. It's easier when we're all uptight, when we're all stressed and all that, it's hard to think things through. And so when we got a big test coming up, relax or peace, shalom, salam, aloha, pa pause, freedom. If we breathe for a second, we can think things through, relax, peace. Well, God says, well, Jesus comes along and says, here are these disciples, these people who follow Jesus all the time. They're like all uptight. They're all scared. Everybody acts scared. Ooh, how, what's your body do when you're uptight? What's your body do when you're uptight? Yeah, I go like that, and I get all scared and tense and all. And Jesus came along to these disciples who were all like this and feeling scared, and he says, peace. Peace be with you. And, and uh, they started to relax and know that Jesus was there. And God comes alongside us, never leaves us. The hard part for that, when I was your age and still today, is trusting that. Because I can't see God, right? Can you all see God? And yet I experience God's peace through you, you, and you, and all of them. God works through them and says, I'm here with you. Mystery, I'm here with you. Aiden, I'm here with you. Cove, I'm here with you. All of you, I'm here with all of you. God says that, and I'm never leaving you, even if I don't, you don't see me. But sometimes it helps me to know it, and I want to 
I want to know. So I go up to this person here, and I said, Joyce, I'm uptight. And what can she say? Peace. Peace. And having that hand is like it makes it more real. And God says, I'm with you. If you need to test that out, sometimes go to people who love you. And I'm going to work through that. And then the other thing, and then we're going to pray, is God says, when you know that, when you experience God's peace, you get to go share that with others. And God wants us to share that. So we can go and say peace to other people. And hopefully they relax, experience aloha, pause, freedom, shalom, and salam. Good job. And help them relax. And then we can figure out life together. God never leaves us. And God offers us peace. Let's pray. Oh, God, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your presence that never, never leaves us. Help us to offer peace to others. Amen. I encourage you as you go out to say peace in whatever language to other people, and all of you turn to somebody and say peace in whatever language you want, and then stand and let's sing, Abide With Me. Peace. Thank you. be seated. 
Let's pray. Well, God, as we hear your word, open our hearts and our minds to you. We invite your presence to be made known to us. Open our minds to you, O God, and and we ask that you transform us. Open our lives to you, O God, and guide us on this journey of faith. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 36 through 48. Listen now to the word of God. While they were talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, hey, have you had anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I always love that. Hey, do you have something to eat? Anyway, the great uh, Swiss psychotherapist Carl Jung had this plaque above his door. said, bidden or not bidden, God is present. Of course, it was written in Latin, and I'm not going to Uh, even attempt to say that but bidden in English bidden or not bidden God is present I used to have that plaque in my house but it must have gotten moved on or gotten lost on one of my moves but bidden or not bidden God is present many have attributed that phrase to Carl Jung thinking he he authored it but actually he found it in the Latin writings of somebody, Aramis, a 16th century Dutch Renaissance Catholic priest and humanist and teacher and uh, theologian. And he liked it, Carl Jung liked it so much that he had it carved in the original Latin and put it over the door to help all who entered remember the presence of God, the presence of spiritual, the presence of the holy Specifically, God's presence was with them as they came in. And I bet Carl Jung, I bet he saw a lot of people going through all sorts of things in life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, just like we do. Uh, And perhaps having that little reminder that they weren't alone as they went through it, that God was with them in all parts of life and all parts of time. My hope is that they would have found a little bit of peace in that. I don't believe he ever, he used the word bidden, but bidden or not, or said in words I can relate to a little bit easier, uh, called upon or not, God is with us. Bidden or not, God is with us, or called upon, when we call upon God or not, God is with us. God's presence, God's love never, ever leaves us, and it isn't dependent on anything we say or do. It isn't dependent on anything we don't do. Young put that plaque up, reminding himself and all his clients of God's presence that shows up, no matter what pain or fear or distress, trouble, or even apathy or disbelief or anger that they were going through, hoping to bring a sense of comfort and peace and awareness. That is good news. That part of the good news, that's part of the good news of Easter, I think, 
part of the good news of Easter is we discover that God is always with us because of the resurrection. Well, that must have been a pretty important message in the 24th chapter of Luke because there are several resurrection stories of God showing up in Jesus in just that chapter alone. Jesus shows up breaking through fear, breaking through chaos, breaking through doubt, and who knows what else. No matter what people were feeling or thinking, God shows up and peace is now possible. That first Easter, the disciples, when they weren't huddled in fear, they were wandering around trying to figure out what to do with their lives next now that their Savior was gone. They were scared, they were frightened, and who knows what else. Well, our passage tells us they were also doubting that Christ was even present. Even though he's right there, they were doubting so much that they didn't even recognize him. As I was saying in the children's moment, I had a wise friend tell me that when I was wrestling with something and not seeing the answers, not seeing what God wanted me to do, he said, relax. Start by relaxing. You want to make a difference? Well, let's start. Start by just relaxing. Gosh, when we're stressed and anxious and scared and afraid, it's difficult to see, even when the answers are right in front of us. Sometimes seeing the answers takes time, but it's difficult to see when we're all those things scared and anxious or angry and unsettled. Relax, Terry Joe. Relax, people of God. Peace be with you. Jesus picked up on that with the disciples. He knew they were afraid, and they had doubts about what they heard, and do you blame them? Think about if you were in their shoes. Do you blame them? Just two weeks ago, two weeks ago was Easter? Yeah. And the trumpet was right about here, and it was blasting, and maybe if you weren't in our church, maybe somewhere else had probably louder music and so forth. Easter lilies filled the steps. Just two weeks ago, we are celebrating Easter, and for a moment or two, the world seemed okay as the Easter promises, at least for me, hopefully for you, were a little bit more tangible. And now, and now there's this, if you watch TV or you live life, there's this commingling of joy and and sorrow and angst Iran is, or was at least, launching missiles aimed at the heart of Israel. The people in Gaza Strip hide and bombed out buildings in case missiles come their way. War and tension is all over the world, it seems like at times. It's hard to see God when bombs are going off. It's difficult for us to see God when we find ourselves suddenly homeless or when someone we love has serious health issues, and we wonder, is this the beginning of the end chapter? It's difficult to see God when when our finances are more than tight, and there doesn't seem to be a response from above. It's difficult to see God when, in our midst, when life gets stressful and the end just seems nowhere in sight. And sometimes when we lose someone we love, We wander like the disciples a bit aimlessly for a while, stuck, just stuck, stuck and not having a clue in how to live into this new reality as the world goes on. Our minds race. We have trouble sleeping. Our world seems to be getting more and more tense. And for many, it can feel a little powerless like we're power, left powerless, not knowing what to do. There's so much in life that kicks up doubt and insecurity and pain, and we don't know what to do. It's pretty easy to understand the depth of angst and fear and restlessness the disciples were feeling. But guess what? God shows up. Jesus the Christ shows up, even if not recognized at first, 
and gives them the blessing of peace. Peace be with you. Pop. Shalom. Aloha. Frieden. <laughs> peace be with you. Relax. I am here. Peace be with you. And it was not long after that that they recognized him. A friend and I were talking about this passage, and he said, God being present, God showing up, whether or not we ask for God to do so, doesn't look like, <laughs> he said, doesn't look like an unwanted, loudmouth relative who crashes a small family event. Love enters over and over and over. God embodied in love and enters into the chaos of our lives. Whatever is bringing that up for different folks and says, peace be with you, relax, I'm with you, and I will never leave. And together, we're going to overcome the tough stuff. Just like I overcame what seemed impossible. Easter joy, we're in the season of Eastertide all up until Pentecost. Easter joy is so much more complex to me, I think, and deeper than the good things that we celebrate in life, the good times and accomplishments. Part of Easter joy is what comes when we recognize God with us, God's presence, even in those tough times. Maybe a deeper kind of joy comes, especially in the midst of uncertainty and difficulty. But sometimes we just need a little reassurance, a little proof, if you will. We believe, but sometimes it just helps us to have a little tangible reminder, God is here. So Jesus says, see, here are my hands, here are my feet. Go ahead, touch them, I'm for real. And then he became a little more real when he said, hey, give me something to eat, please. Why did he do that? Preacher and teacher Barbara Brown Taylor has speculated that maybe it's because eating is so necessary for life and so is he. Or maybe it's because sharing food is what makes him human. Most other species forage alone so that feeding is a solitary business. But us human beings seem to love, love eating together. Even when we're stuck alone with a frozen dinner, most of us will open a magazine or turn on the television just for company. It is, at any rate, one of the clues to his presence. There is always a chance when we are eating together that we will discover the risen Lord in our midst. Hey, give me something to eat. So they ate together, and they began to move forward. They began to live into that peace that he offered, able to move forward. They were able to go from being scared, from being fearful, to being bold witnesses to God's presence. Love and resurrection where nothing can separate us from God and able to bring that gift into the future, making us heirs of the resurrection, heirs of the awareness that God with us because he picked up on the invitation to witness on that what they were witnessing firsthand. And because of the resurrection, we know God is with us. God is present, bidden or not. Apparently, that was not only above Young's doorway, but it was so profound that he had it carved on his tombstone. It reminds me of the Romans passage and part of an affirmation of faith we sometimes say that says, nothing in life or death can separate us from God, and resurrection is a proof of that. God, God gives us the gift of peace and is at work whether we know it or not. And we pick up that torch from the disciples and all who came after them to witness to God's love that shows up. And so we write, bidden or not bidden, God is present above our doors, or at least in our hearts. And I'm not sure who this quote is from, but he or she said, the highest form of communion with God is to live our lives in such a way as to sense God's presence with us each moment, each breath, each blink of the eye, each heartbeat, and in each encounter with another human being. 
created in the image of God. Receive God's peace. Trust in God's presence and witness to God's loving presence so that others can also touch, touch it and feel it in their own need. Peace. Let's pray. Wherever we turn, O oh God, you are there. We give thanks for your steadfast love, O oh God, that continues to show up whether we call on you or not. Give us the peace we desperately need that we can boldly be witnesses to your love, living in ways that show up for others. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us stand, if able, and say what we believe using the brief statement of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life breaking the power of sin and evil, and delivering us from death to et life eternal. Amen. You may be seated. In response to God's abundance of peace and love, let us share our tithes and offerings.
O oh God, we give thanks for these gifts. Bless them and may they be a channel of your peace in this part of the world. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us remain standing and sing hymn number 540, God be with you till we meet again. Several snowbirds heading back, and what a perfect hymn to sing. May God be with you till we meet again. Um, and a reminder that I hope you'll come join us down in Keys Hall for a presentation and uh, some plantains and some other food, maybe, and Guatemalan coffee and champaradas. Yeah. Um, no, wherever you go from this place, and no matter how far, God's peace goes with you. God's peace is with us, and God's peace goes before us. Relax, and the answers will come to whatever you're facing in life. God is with us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the God, the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.